Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Book Goodies Author Series of Podcasts. I'm your host, Deborah Carney, and I have with me today author Rachel Cherie. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Hi, Deborah. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad the heat wave in New York City broke finally, and I'm, I'm not sweltering in, in 100% humidity and, you know, 100-degree heat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Now, Rachel, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners and tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, my name's Rachel Cherie. Um, that's my pen name. It's my first and middle name. And um, part of the reason that I go by that is because I actually started writing uh, when I was in, well, middle school. I was um, 14 when I finished my first manuscript and um, I just thought that it would be better to go by a name that I would always have because I at that time had hopes of getting married and so that's why I, I chose my first and middle name as my, my kind of pen name. Um, since then I've written several manuscripts but um, I have only published uh, one so far and I published it I self-published it originally, um, but then I went back and had it um, published in a traditional uh, format with uh, publishing company Tate Publishing. Okay. And yeah, and so um, so yeah, so that's kind of kind of where I'm at at the moment. Um, I live over in California, and um, my my husband and I just had our uh, first baby um, a little over a year ago, and so it's been um, a real adventure trying to do all this book stuff and marketing stuff with the baby around. So yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and now you um, you said you self published it first, and then you traditionally published. How did you find that um, process when you? Uh, when you went to the traditional publisher, you pub you're republishing the same book as what you're doing. Yeah, because when I originally when I self published it, I um, I just wanted to get it in print, and I didn't really. I mean, I, it would have been nice to do the traditional publishing the first time, I think, but I was. Um, I don't think the internet was as you know, as vast as it is now. And so the traditional publishing process just seemed really vague and intimidating to me. Right. And so, so yeah, I, I went ahead and self-published it originally, and that was in 2005. I was 19. And then in, um, in uh, actually, yeah, no, I was 19. And then... Um, just last year, um, I got it done to a traditional publishing company, and I did it kind of for a couple reasons. One of the primary ones was that um, I was I had two sequel books that um, I have that will follow this this one um, right. called Treachery at Martinique Isle, and so. Um, all the editing and labor and everything that went into that, I didn't want to be pulling that load completely by myself. Mm -hmm. So that was part of it. And the other thing was is that I am really, really bad at self-promoting. And I didn't <laughs> realize how bad I was until I was trying to do it myself. And then I was just, there was absolutely no way around it. I was just like, wow, I, I am, I'm, I, I undersell myself pretty much right. because I just don't know how to answer certain types. Like, it felt really odd to me to answer certain types of questions. Like, um, one of the ones that I would get the most was someone would be like, oh, you published a book? That's nice. Is it any good? And I'd be like, <laughs> well, I think so because I took the time to publish it. But, um, you know, I can't guarantee what you'll think, but... <laughs> and, you know, book whether a book is good or not is extremely subjective. And, yes. <laughs> you know, they need to read it before they figure it out or, you know, at least flip through it and look at some of the pages and decide. 
um, if, if it was a good book or not. But yeah, that's a pretty interesting question to be asked when you're telling people about your book. Is it any good? No, it's horrible. Go right out and buy it. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was like, really, would someone, I, I just, to me, it was illogical that I would have taken the time and effort to attempt to get it available to other people if I thought it was bad, so. <laughs> I wanted to see how bad I could get out there. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that is pretty, that, that's pretty interesting. But again, you know, like you said, the internet has changed publishing a lot, and even, you are going with a more traditional publisher now. Um, which gives you supposedly more credibility. And, you know, but you it sounds like you chose your publishing house based on some services that you wanted that you couldn't get yourself. So um, were, was it, you know, things like editing and things like, you know, help with your cover and, you know, direction from them? Or was it more that you just wanted a publishing house name on there? Um, I really did want someone to, um, well, I wanted someone to go through and edit it. I wanted mm -hmm. someone, because I'm, I'm pretty good at English. Um, it's one of my strong points. And so I felt pretty comfortable as far as the, um, you know, the grammatical correctness and all that mm -hmm. goes. Um, and it was actually really funny because my, um, my, uh, editor that she, when she edited, edited it the first time she said she goes I don't know that I've seen a manuscript this clean in years but um, <laughs> but um, but but the person that I was really looking forward to was the um, conceptual editor who went through and just made sure that you know things lined up correctly and you know this is too ridiculous you know you need right. to you know fix this or that and the other thing that I thought was that was valuable to me was just knowing that they were helping to make it more marketable than it was just from me, right. you know. And it was still, I mean, they, they, um, the way that they went about it, the a lot of the, especially the conceptual um, editing that they did, a lot of it was stuff that. I mean, I could change it or not, right. and but a lot of times I did change it because I figured they're they're supposed to be experts in their area, and so if I was taking the time and money and effort, and whatever, to to have them go through it with me, then I probably should, as a whole, listen to their advice. And so, um, a lot of times I would. I would kind of do a lot of the changes that they suggested, and and really the I mean my book is the same book. I mean there's there's differences in it. There's a couple. There's one big section that changed, but um, but I walked away feeling feeling like like I was confident that it was a good quality book. Like I I thought it was a good book before, but I you know after all that editing, you feel I felt more confident about it. Like oh well you know. I know that these parts got ironed out. I know that these things are smoother. I, I just felt better about it overall. Okay. And, and that's important because, you know, a lot of people um, that I have talked to that, you know, went through a, tradition, a traditional house, and most of these were for nonfiction, you know, they, they butted heads with people that wanted to change their book to fit a certain formula or they wanted to make changes to their book that they didn't want to make changes to. And um, it sounds like you're having a really positive experience because you have an editor that understands your story and that helped you with the development pieces. And like you said, they smoothed out some things that were a little rough that even though you're good at English, you're too close to the story. You know, you know what you want it to say, but you need someone to tell you if it really came out the way you wanted it to be said. Right. Yes. Yeah. And and I I I don't know. My I really value the like. I my favorite part of a story is um, is the characters, but part of the characters being themselves is them. You know having their mannerisms match and their, you know, their communication makes sense and, and all that and having them 
be who they are throughout the whole story. And, um, and so, I mean, to me, like, I understand what I'm trying to get across. And so it's just, I don't know, it's an extra comfort to me to know that someone else went along and said, yeah, that, this makes sense. And it wasn't, you know, my mom and my sister and my husband and people who are close to me because while I value those, those people's opinions, um, there's, there's just, there's a sense that they'll be softer on you than maybe someone who's much more potentially objective is. And so, so that's, yeah, that I, I really think that for me that having the concept editor was probably the, one of the top three most important things to me about having the traditional publishing done. So. That's great. And like you said, they can, um, a lot of publishing houses don't do a lot of promotion anymore, but they can at least um, let you know the types of things that they need you to do and they can give you direction and they can make you more comfortable with the marketing of your book. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, like, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure what, what other publishing houses um, offer, but I was, I was intrigued that these guys, um, take publishing, but they offered, um, when I signed up, you had, you had the option to do like an, an audio book, um, a website, um, oh, and I think maybe like a Facebook or Twitter right. or something. And so I actually do web design myself. And so I was like, well, I don't need that. And I know how to use Facebook. So I, I, I figured I could set up my own Facebook. Right. And, um, and so then it was kind of down between this uh, TV commercial or an audio book. And I just, so I went ahead with the, the TV commercial option because I just thought that it was the the most, I don't know, that was the most out of reach for me. In right, theory. the thing you I couldn't mean, do. Yeah, that was the biggest thing I couldn't do. And, um, and that's something else that I really liked about them is that they, um, you know, uh, publishing houses, they have connections. They have good connections. They have, you know, long-standing relationships with, you know, media stores and people and media. Yeah. And I just, um, there have been times where I just, I like was trying to get, trying to communicate with, um, with, uh, somewhere. And I was just, just knowing that I have someone that I can say that I can email and ask for help on that. Yep. Not only do they communicate with, you know, media and stuff on their own for me, um, but, but I have someone directly that I know I can ask and that they'll have some sort of an answer for me. And that that's a, a value to me as well. <laughs> yeah, that's very valuable. There's a lot of authors that are out there doing it all themselves. And, you know, they don't have someone to ask the questions to. Um, do, you re- do you belong to any writers groups or are you more um, of a go, at your lo- uh, go it alone kind of, kind of writer? Honestly, I do a lot of um, going it alone, and sometimes I think, oh, maybe maybe I should, you know, try and um, reach out to more, I don't know, be more involved in maybe a club or something. And I have actually joined some online communities like um, uh, She Writes, I think it is, SheWrites.com, and um, some other things like that. But it's it's more because... I'm trying to, um, I don't know, spread spread the word about myself more or less, and so it's more for promotional purposes than support purposes, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that makes total and, sense. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I um, I've probably been having the the, the most interested in um, recently is trying to accumulate. Um, reviews, book reviews. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's something that I realized a couple months ago that I should probably put out more effort into, and hence my going ahead and um, trying to get involved in some other um, extra 
communities like the she writes dot com and and stuff like that. So okay, well, and that's a challenge because you know there's a lot of book bloggers out there and a lot of bloggers that would review books that have other things on their site as well, and you need to figure out how to find those people, and then you have to figure out how to get them to agree to read your book, and then if they need a physical copy instead of wanting to read an, an electronic copy, then you have to decide, is the is the review going to be worth the cost of sending out the book? Um, if your publisher is sending out the books and it's at no charge to you, that's awesome, but, you know, for a lot of the smaller houses and for a lot of um, self-published authors you know it's much easier to send book reviewers a pdf and ask them to review that than it is to send out a, a physical book oh yeah yeah i know it's it's been it's been interesting trying to figure out what the best avenue for me is um and i it's something that i'm probably i actually need to talk to um my marketing agent about mm-hmm. some more to to just try and make sure because the one, the one thing that is kind of um, that maybe a, a self-published person might have an advantage of, uh, over is that um, there are some things that, you know, with the contract and everything that's involved with signing up with a traditional public, publishing house, there's some things that I'm not sure, you know, I have to double check and make sure I'm not, you know, breaking the contract or, you know, doing something that will end up coming back poorly on me, <laughs> you right. know, by sending certain things out. And I mean, if it's a hard, if it's a paperback hard copy, I don't, there's like no way you can go wrong. But the digital realm is kind of a bit dodgy in that area. So Yeah, you could end up sending it to a lot of people that um, don't put it out, you know, that, that either put it out on their blogs and they don't um, don't actually do a review and... You know, you can have people that just do bad reviews for a living, and <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've yeah. come across some of those people. You know, you, oh. <laughs> you can have a beautiful, well-written book, and they're going to find something wrong with it, and that's what they're going to post the review about. And um, like you, I'm really good with grammar, and I didn't trust even myself, so I ran a manuscript through um, my daughter as well, who is a very good editor. And I put a book up, and the only negative comment was that they said that that the grammar and sentence structure was very poor. And I'm like, I don't know what book you read, but it wasn't mine. (laughs) (laughs) You're reviewing the wrong book. Yeah, um, I I think that that's one of the things that makes it hard, too, is that, you know, um, when you put a book out there, it's usually, you know, it's it's a piece of artwork, really, and mm-hmm. so it's you know it's personal when people are critical of it, and um, you know it's one thing if it's you know positive sided uh, constructive criticism where it's like oh you know I like this but you know if you did this or this it might be better you know type that that is livable most of the time but then you know when people are just seem like they're bashing it it's kind of kind of painful really. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And, but you have to just, you have to develop a thick skin because, um, like I said, there are some people that they're just negative. That That's just it, you know. And our society is not a society of supportive people in print. So, like, when people go to leave an Amazon review, a bunch of them are going to just leave negative reviews just because they don't have anything positive to say about anything. And the people that enjoyed it didn't think about going back and leaving a good review. You know, you kind of have to nudge those people and say, hey, I know you read my book. Um, can you go leave me a review on Amazon? And they're like, oh, okay, I really enjoyed it and I just forgot. You know, and but yeah. the negative people are like, you know, they're looking, they're out looking to just get attention for themselves, and they'll be the first ones to run right over and say, "I found a mistake on page ninety-two, and it made the whole book go bad for me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's just something you got to deal with and get a little bit of a thick skin about. As long yeah. as you know you put out the best product that you can, you know, and like you said, you worked with a conceptual editor. And you just have to go with the flow. Oh yeah, yeah, and and I mean I haven't. It's kind of funny because I haven't. Um, 
I, I'm actually waiting for a bad review because I, I haven't gotten it out to, I, in my opinion, I probably haven't gotten it out to enough people to hit, hit that edge where you'll start to get the bad reviews because the people are far enough removed to you that they don't mind, you know, saying negative things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of in that almost like breath held anticipation zone kind of, um, you know, waiting, waiting for it to happen. I know eventually it will. Mm -hmm. And just because, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't like, um, certain types of stories. And so I am sure that, you know, other people, you know, aren't particular, you know, what the genre I wrote in isn't going to be someone's favorite, but hopefully they just won't read it. (laughs) Exactly. If you don't like the genre, don't read the book. Um, and, and that leads me to another quick little story. I have um, some transcripts of podcasts in another industry that I've put up, and it's clear that they're transcripts of, of podcasts. And I had put the books out, uh, um, they're small books, and I had put them out for review. And one woman, I had put out like five of them, and one woman reviewed all five. And in the very first review, she says, this contains very good information, but I don't like the transcript format. And then the next review she did, she said, this has very good information in it, but I really don't like the transcript format. And then the third one, she says, by now you know I don't like the transcript format, but this also has really good information in it if you can get through and read the whole thing, and I just don't like the format. And I'm like, if you don't like the format, you know all five of these are done in the same format. You know, why, why, why did you just keep reading them? Just, you know, don't, just just say nothing. You know, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. <laughs> but um, yeah. that isn't the way it always works in the world. So they weren't negative, negative reviews. They were just, you know, a, a comment on the on the formatting and from those uh, comments I took and made sure that it was very very clear in the description that it was a transcript and that it would read you know like a discussion between people in transcript form and I've had less comments about it you know since I've done that so even your negative reviews can actually give you something to think about or that you know they might point out something that you do actually want to change yeah yeah and and I think um, I think that probably the hardest thing that a lot of people have that I'm hopefully going to be able to to deal with is having um, you know a positive outlook on it despite the fact that you know maybe people are saying negative things so Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah now, um, you started on this process um, very young, which I applaud you for. Um, I've been working with some, one of my goals is to work with younger authors um, to get their work out because I think that we have a rich, um, creative group of uh, kids that are coming up in the next generation, um, including my grandson who's 12, who's already published a book. And it it's not a long book; it's a short book. But it's it it looks to me like um, all of a sudden I'm hearing stories about a lot of 11 to 14 year olds that are writing, you know, either nonfiction books or fiction books or you know just stories. And I really want to encourage that to continue and um, help help the younger people. Like, do go ahead and self-publish on Kindle and just, you know, get your name out there and and don't worry about the fact that, you know, you're young. Um, how, is that pretty much why you self-published when you were younger or you just, like you said, it was too daunting of a task to go um, even try with the, with the publishing houses? Um, part of it for me was I just didn't, I mean... I just didn't know. I grew up in a really rural area, and um, so I didn't really have um, access to a lot of um, material that maybe I would have had access to if I had been in a less rural area. Right. Um, but 
but the I think part of it was the internet was I mean it was younger then and um, whether it's because I wasn't looking for the right things or um, whatever I'm I don't know but part of it too was that I was hung up on trying to find an agent mm-hmm. to represent me to publishing companies and um, I probably got like um, well, originally, when I very, very first did it, I just went straight to, I, I didn't, I didn't feel, I was, I don't know, I, I was intimidated really by the, the whole concept of doing the, um, the traditional publishing, and I was afraid that, um, you know, for some re- that it might get rejected, and so, um, because, it was a it was a story that I wanted to um, dedicate to uh, my cousin, and um, I just didn't want to mess with the possibility that I would be able to get it printed. So, so that's why I just went straight to um, a self publisher, and um, and then. A couple years later, it was like, you know, um, I really do want to get it traditionally published. And part of it was because um, when when people, it would come up in a conversation one way or another, and someone would say, oh, well, Rachel, Rachel's published a, a book, blah, blah, you know, whatever. And, um, and the other person would say, oh, really? That's nice. And, um, and they would somehow it would get it come up that it was a self-published book and they'd be like oh and it was like the it was like the value of it like shrunk <laughs> like right. it went from being oh a published book to oh a self-published book like you know it was very yeah. um i don't know kind of awkward like it was like it it just got devalued and it was just it was an uncomfortable thing to kind of see happen and so i was like well you know, I, I said I could get it, you know, published traditionally. And so um, then I went about trying to find um, uh, an agent. And I ran into a company that kind of, um, they they kind of, they gave us a couple, they gave us five agents that they recommended that I contact. And then um, when we tried to ask them, um, for more information later, like they disappeared, and so I don't know if they were a, a scam or whatever. But uh, but I contacted the five agents, and all of them, um, there might have been seven of them, but they all um, sent very very nice rejection letters. And so I was really bummed about that, and waited a, a couple more years. And my um, my husband's mother in law, or my mother in law, um, <laughs> my husband's mom um she suggested that she's like well why are you why are you stressing about these agents why don't you just you know send it into a, a publisher and i was like because that's not well, how you do know. it <laughs> can, can you do that <laughs> she's like yeah i think so and so um so i looked around and tried to find a publisher that published um similar material to to, to books that I thought I would be, you know, writing long term. Right. And so I ended up submitting, I submitted three manuscripts to Tate Publishing because I, I was just like, come on, please pick one, one. And so <laughs> they wrote back and they were like, oh, we're, they were interested in, um, I can't remember if it was two of them or all three of them or whatever, but um, it was it was just a huge relief to, to be like, oh, I don't have to have an agent. <laughs> Oh, but it was it was a long it was a long process and it was it was just as much um mentally trying as it was, you know, physically, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what went where and, and all of that. And so um I don't know, it was a it was an interesting thing to do and um I'm glad that I self published first, I think, because I have a like, I kind of know a little bit about both sides of the coin. I'm not, you know, stuck with one or the other. 
and um, if I could give my younger self um, advice, I probably would say, yeah, go ahead and do the self-publishing, but, you know, skip the agent thing. <laughs> so, Good. Well, but, and that was going to be my next question, is if you had some advice to give to a new author, um, what would it be? And you kind of did, but can you expand upon that a little bit? Yeah, I would say, you know, um, I would say that maybe, well, I would say before before they went into the publishing process that they needed to make, they need to make sure that, that you know, they're, you know, that they've gotten their manuscript looked at by someone other than themselves to make sure that, you know, for grammar and, and it's, it is nice to have someone be frank and honest with you about the, the actual plot line, you know, make sure that, you know, things make sense and that they go in a, you know, proper order and, and all that. Um, and so, you know, when, once they have their manuscript to the point that they think, you know, that it's ready to go, um, I think that, you know, by all means, um, try to submit to a traditional publisher. Um, and whether it's whether they feel more comfortable, you know, trying to land an agent or going directly to the publisher, you know, feel free to try both. And, um, you know, if for some reason that doesn't pan out, I would seriously just say, you know, go to self-publishing. And then if, if they think that, you know, um, if they're if they're uncomfortable with the idea of pursuing a traditional publisher right off the bat, uh, I would really suggest them maybe starting with something like an ebook because it doesn't involve all the all the costs that printing a book does. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for a young person or someone who's you know strapped for cash or whatever, um, that would give them. You know, that would give them something to start with and something that they could show to other people and use for promotional, you know, purposes for themselves or their story or whatever. I think, and, that's, I think that's great advice, um, especially the, uh, I know that some of the other authors we've interviewed started self-published, like yourself, and then whereas you went and... Um, sought out a publishing house Um, some of the others that self-published especially in in digital format or um, you know print on demand format they were found by someone who told a publishing house about them you know hey I read this great Mm -hmm. book I think you guys should take a look at it or that the author was contacted directly you know, by someone who read the book and said, hey, I think you would be a good fit for such and such publishing house. And there's a lot more small publishing houses than there were a few years ago. And you can have a boutique or a niche or, you know, like you said, go look for a publishing house that publishes the same type of thing that you do and and see if they're looking for new authors. And that way you're not, you know, trying to sell a publisher that does cookbooks a novel. (laughs) Exactly, yes. (laughs) Yes. Because that will just end in disappointment for everyone. (laughs) Right, right. They're going to be offended. You know, and if you do write a cookbook and send it into them later, they're going to remember that you sent them a novel, and they're going to be like, no. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that kid. (laughs) No, bad, bad, bad. And when you were younger and you were writing, did you were you um, telling people how old you were, or was it just like, you know, was it part of your bio that you know I'm 19 and I wrote a book, or was it just you know, your bio was you know I came up with a story and I wrote a book and blah blah blah. Well, um, it was more that you know I I had been writing for, you know, several years at that point and, um, you know, that, that I, I grew up in a rural area and I had written 
several um, manuscripts by the time that that one was getting published. And so I, my, my little bio is probably about three sentences. Yeah. And, and um, if I remember correctly, I kind of had my mom write it because I was like, I have no idea what to say about myself. I'm in college right now. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what to say about myself. When people ask me for a bio, I cringe. Yeah. Yeah, well, I I, I feel kind of the same way. So usually I just kind of like, I'm like, well, I did this and this, and this is a fact. So I guess that works. <laughs> so cause it, it's hard coming up with what to say about yourself because, you know, it's like... Um, I don't know, people who, I, I always think it's really funny when um, someone asks me, you know, how, how do you, or why do you write, or how do you write, and I'm always like, well, how, how could you not, because it's just so um, natural to me that, um, that I don't know, I mean, it's hard for me to imagine a life without writing like I just it's just part of who I am and it's something that I love and whatever and and so but in that way that you know I I'm like well I I don't know how how do you not it's kind of the same as writing a, a, a bio you're like well this is just who I am I'm really not sure what you will think is important but <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, <laughs> and that's that's important for for young writers and older writers or any age in between. You know, um, you write because you want to write and because you can't imagine not writing. And that's the mark of a true writer. I mean, you can learn how to write a book. You can learn how to be an author. You can learn how to write authority books on, you know, nonfiction subjects. You can follow... Uh, formulas for writing romance or writing, you know, science fiction or whatever. But when it comes to the end of the day, you write because you have to. It, it's there and it, it needs to come out. And you you have stories to tell and you're going to tell them. And, you know, way back in history, you would have been a minstrel or a storyteller. And, you know, people would have gathered around you in the town square while you told stories. And, you know, that's what our present day writers are. They're, they're storytellers. You know, you're a writer and you tell stories. And it's just the craft of getting the story from you to people to enjoy. You know, that's the that's the journey after you finish the story is getting it out however way you can. Self published, traditional published, you know, ebook, print book, it doesn't matter. But once the story is finished, it, it isn't complete until you get it in front of people. And then you can go on with your next story. Like you said, you've got other books already written and just waiting to go. And, you know, you figured it out and you started young and you've just been doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that don't, they just don't do it. They turn off that part of their brain and, and they, don't, they don't let themselves uh, feel the, the writing power. Everybody has a story to tell. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's actually, um, that's kind of one of the things that I I thought was interesting is since I got it, since I self-published my first book, there was a lot of um, my peers as parents that were like, oh, I've been wanting to write a book for years, and I just haven't taken the time or haven't, you know, been able to start it. Or, you know, they, they have some reason why, why they... Um, they haven't been able to do it, and I mean, I I witnessed life can be crazy and everything, but but there just comes you know comes a point where I guess that's you know that's the that's what really determines if it's if it's something that you're meant to do is that what it was the same by hell or high water <laughs> you yep. find a way and. Um, and yeah, it's been um, it's been interesting, and it's actually really funny. Um, after after I got um, this this manuscript accepted by um, Kate Publishing, um, my mother in law actually she 
she, when I was talking to her about it, she was like, oh, I've been wanting to write and this and that. And then once I actually got it done, then she, she found, she, she just sat down and she wrote, she wrote a book and she was like, all, she's all excited. And I'm, I'm happy for her because, I mean, it's rewarding to, it's, it's, it's sometimes really hard to start, but I don't, I don't know, I mean, for, for a writer, when you finish a book, it's like, you know, uh, an athlete winning their event, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, it's done. I, I actually finished it. It's completed and it's done. <laughs> and so, yeah. um, no, it's, I, I'm all, even if, even if they never, you know, get around to getting it published for some reason, it, even if they write it and, you know, people that they know can get the chance to read it, then, you know, that's better than never getting to write it at all. Yeah, totally. Totally. Well, Rebecca, I've had such a great... Oh, Rachel, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting my authors mixed up. And um, Rachel, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. I I'm really enjoyed you know listening to you and how you come across your journey on being a writer do you have any parting thoughts for anyone you know just if they're thinking about it you know what what would you like to leave people thinking um i think that um you know if 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 you have a story that is in the back of your mind um you know every chance you get it bring it to the forefront of your mind and, you know, even if all you do for, you know, a couple months is jot down notes, um, you know, build your characters and, you know, get get to know your characters and your, you know, think about your plot line. Even if you just do tiny bits at a time, you know, tiny bits add up over, you know, over time and there's, there's there's no wrong way to start really even you know some people they start writing the middle of their story and then they have to write the you know the beginning and the end but you know as long as it gets started that's the that's the hardest part and um and but once it actually happens it it'll get easier (laughs) after that (laughs) All right. That's great. That's great advice. And that's um, that's echoing what some other folks have been saying. You know, just get started. And just, you know, don't worry that you don't know exactly everything that's going to happen. And um, like one of the authors I interviewed said, allow yourself to write crap. You know, because if you if you stop yourself because you don't think it's perfect as you're writing it, you know, you'll end up blocking, self-blocking yourself and putting your own roadblocks in front of yourself. So just make little notes here and there of what you think. I I like that idea. Make little notes as they come to you, you know, and next thing you know, in six months, you've got something. And in a year, you've got something more. And then you put it together and look at that. You wrote a book and you didn't even realize you were writing a book. So, yeah. Well, Well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a haircut. It, you know, you can always you can always trim more off, but you know, if you don't, if there's not length there, then you know you can't you can't add back on. But you can always cut off. So, you know, if you if you write too much, you can always trim it out. But <laughs> you have to yep. write it. You have to write it in order to know what to trim. Yep. So, Rachel, thank you very much um, for taking time out of your day to speak to us. And can you tell us where um, you said you have your own website? Can you tell us where that is? Oh, absolutely. My website is rachelsheree dot com. Can you spell that? Um, I'm on. What's that? Can you spell that for those that are listening that aren't seeing the show notes? Oh yeah, definitely. It's spelled R A C H E L. C H E R I E dot C O M. Okay. And um, I'm also on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Although I'm not much of a Twitterer, I don't I don't tweet much. So, but I'm on there. And um, and my book right now is available um, through uh, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and um, Tate Publishing. Um, you can also buy it directly off my website as well. So. Okay. Beautiful. 
Well, um, thank you again. And also for those of you that are listening that found us um, through iTunes or another uh, online format and you aren't on our website, please do visit bookgoodies.com and do a search for Rachel and her podcast will pop up. And you will be able to see the, all the links to all the stuff that we've talked about and to her book and to her website. And um, we also, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash bookgoodies and facebook.com slash bookgoodies. And also we want to invite you to come to bookgoodies.com and in the upper navigation you will see a contact link. And that will allow you to... Um, let us know of a topic that you would like us to speak about um, or you can offer to be a guest yourself on our podcast and there's also a link up there where you can tell us about your book so even if you don't have time or you know don't choose to to be on a podcast you can type in your book information and we will put it out on our website and those are free services that we offer because we want to get the word out about um, authors that are you know, we're not all the big J.K. Rawlings and Stephen Kings of the world. And, you know, we want to make sure that all the good books are able to be found. And um, also, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter.com slash Loxley, L-O-X-L-Y, like in Robin Hood, Robin of Loxley. And you can also find me at DebraCarney.com. Uh, as always, we want to thank GeekCast.fm for hosting all of our podcasts and for uh, you can go over there and find other podcasts about marketing and internet marketing and being a work at home mom and dad and just a whole bunch of other really great podcasts so thanks everybody for listening sit down start writing and have a great night